We are in the last few hours of the Labour leadership race. The 600,000 people eligible to vote have until midday today to cast their ballot. How they vote? Well, we won't know that until late Saturday morning. Here's a reminder of some of the voices of the campaign. Britain needs a Labour Party that can rebuild after this defeat. And now it's time for someone else to take forward the leadership of this party. I'll be fighting for what I believe in till the very end. I have an alternative argument to make that will help Labour win so we can change the country for the better. Are we going to go back to private finance initiative with the 600% um, cost of investment in schools and hospitals because that surely is a, a model that has Your failed. Your plan is what like I'm private so, finance well, I'm, on steroids. I'm it not is sure. worse than that. You I'm, want to just put quantitative easing in. I'm not, you are not being straight with people I'm and that's sure why there's huge numbers of economists um, have said it doesn't stack up. I moved Labour's position on the welfare bill actually to a position of opposition. Was I prepared to resign from the shadow cabinet and plunge Labour into a civil war? Well, I wasn't prepared to do that because I've always put the party first. When people say you know, well, my heart says I should really be without politics. Well, get a transplant, because that's just that. <laughs> to talk about having a transplant, if you saw it, Jeff, is an absolute term of abuse that's unacceptable. Have you felt um, Tony Blair? Um, well, the MP John Cruddus is widely respected across the party, often talked of as one of its big thinkers. He was Ed Miliband's policy coordinator, although he's expressed his frustration that more of his ideas were not taken up. He was also one of those who nominated Jeremy Corbyn, arguing his inclusion was vital, even if he didn't agree with him. When I went to his offices yesterday, I asked who he had voted for. I actually haven't voted yet. What I decided to do was wait until the very last minute to sort of consume everything that everyone's trying to say and then try and make sense of it and uh, make my mind up, because I still haven't made up my mind, really. I think it's been fascinating. It's uh, partly because of what Jeremy's done. It's just uh, created these extraordinary amount of people getting yeah. participating. You nominated oh, Jeremy. Yeah, you yeah, were yeah. one of those who nominated Jeremy and you, you actually said at the time, I think it was, that he can sort of detonate a few things. It needs to be, dare I say, blown up a bit. Yeah. Did you well, expect I, that he would do it as he has? No, I didn't think he'd have as much success as he obviously has. And it has changed the whole character of the conversation. It needed to, arguably. the Labour Party has just come out of its worst defeat in its history. It's in the middle of a huge crisis in terms of who it is, where it stands for. He has had an analysis of what happened at the election. We were austerity light and he's come up with a policy heavy, very disciplined campaign that has enthused people. He's got people to join. I'll give you an example. My, my son rings me up at the beginning of the campaign. He says, well, look, I'm rejoining the party. You know, a couple of days later, my mum rings up, says she's joined the party, something she's equivocated over for nearly a decade. They are enthused by something that's been going on in and around Labour, which they have not been for a very long time. And they are all supporting Jeremy Corbyn. My mum definitely is, my son definitely is. You but know, you they're... are not. You nominated him, and yeah. in terms of what he said, it's nowhere near the sort of things you normally say. We need to confront the scale of this epic defeat we had. He has one diagnosis and remedy for it. I disagree with a lot of it. I'm enthused by a lot of what's come along with that, but at least it's alive conversation which we're in danger of just sort of slipping into a repeat i mean that's partly because of this the nature of the resignation you know achieved immediately rather than allowing us to diagnose the nature of the defeat and have competing views about that and then having a leadership election you talk about the party being in, in the death zone that the defeat was epic in its scale if jeremy corbyn is elected leader is it out of the death zone is it more likely to survive could he be elected prime minister no one knows. This is going to be a, a turbulent period. Here's the thing about Jeremy Corbyn. He is not causing the crisis for the Labour Party. He, his campaign is symptomatic of the nature of the crisis. You know, he's sort of inhabiting that crisis and diagnosing it. Okay, right? And I think that has to be welcome. Okay, even if he ends up as leader of the party? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the nature of the democracy we have. One of his central arguments is an anti-austerity one. Yeah. And the review that you have carried out right. since the election, the central message was that people voted for the Conservatives Conservatives because they had an austerity measure right. policy rather than in, in spite right. of it. Jeremy's diagnosis is that Labour is austerity.
pretty light. Now, that seems to me to be at odds with where the country is. Now, you can disagree with where the country is and try to change it, but we should be able to accept empirically the nature of the electoral outcome. I don't think necessarily he agrees with that, and I would disagree with that, even though I would share the concerns that I'm a bit unhappy about where the country is in terms of their acceptance of a lot of the austerity. And that is reflects the failure of Labour to get through its economic message and re-establish its economic bona fides post-2010. Because, let's be clear, you were Ed Miliband's policy chief. So you were sitting in his office, responsible for, or at least arguing for, certain policies, the, the policies of the, of the party. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think we went nearly enough in using opposition to re-establish the character of the party. Which means what? Because you are described, you've been described as sort of on the, the left of the party, you've been described as a modernizer in the blue Labour, which would suggest the more right of the party. How would you describe your politics? Well, I don't. I don't spend a lot of time sort of uh, consumed by that self-identification. Really, I'm, I'm, look, I don't want the Labour Party to stand for everything I believe in because arguably it never achieve elected office, right? But I want a sense of a contribution and an internal democracy that is courteous of different contributions within the party. That's why I very much welcome. Okay, so if Jeremy Corbyn comes to you uh, after the weekend and says, "I'd like you in my shadow cabinet," what do you say to him? Well, to me, it's the, the future of the party will not be resolved within the shadow cabinet. It's about rebuilding the party across the country. It's about rebuilding a body of work. I'm not really interested in repeating what I did the last few years. A lot of people say, look, he could win the, lead, the leadership of the Labour Party, but he can't win the country. If one of the other candidates in this race cannot win the leadership, could they win the country? I don't know. And actually, all the evidence suggests that the nature of the Labour membership is increasingly different to the nature of the society that we want to govern. And that is difficult in terms of uh, future prospects for the party. And that means at some stage we're going to have to pivot out of this leadership election and confront the realities in the country, which could be quite a, uh, a salutary experience for us. Given what your polling showed about what has happened right. to Labour, in a way, Jeremy Corbyn is a reflection of that, a continuation of a trend away, away from the country. Are you concerned about what might happen to the party if he does win in terms of what support he would command, whether he can survive as leader? Well, I'm concerned about the future of the Labour Party in, in, in total. You know, the problems of the Labour Party do not start and end with Jeremy Corbyn. You know, that, there is a reflection of deeper, long-term changes in the sort of industrial structure of the country, technological changes, moves towards individual preferences and choice in consumption of public services, all of these things which are at odds with the traditional architecture that built the social democracy that we're associated to. And it's, it means that, you know, we can't guarantee the future of the Labour Party, that we have to go into a fundamental reflection of what we do. We have not had much to say since Blair, actually. Jerry Corbyn's campaign has sort of run towards that crisis. I welcome a lot of the contributions that have come into it, but I'm, uh, you know, I also disagree with some of the other stuff that comes with it. You know, some of the menace around all that sort of stuff. I don't well, know. Not, like, least, but, not least but, Tony Blair himself. I mean, if absolutely. Tony, and if part of this thing, at some stage, the Labour Party is going to have to rehabilitate Blair and his legacy and it goes beyond this simple caricature of what he was I mean it was a rich textured political project that has real grip in the country right. and that's part of the crisis that is consuming us now because now he's become some sort of a figure uh, to be you know demonized you talk about your various family members who've signed up enthused by Jeremy Corbyn do you think he could do that far more widely all those people who didn't vote who haven't voted in years might think actually here's somebody I could vote for yeah, I think you'll see a lot of that occur, actually. You know, he's cutting through in ways that I didn't think were imaginable barely weeks away. A few months ago, we were, even though we barely recognised it, really, we just had the biggest collision with the electorate that we've had in its history. And it was in dire crisis, and um, still is. And uh, this might not work. I mean, I'm worried about some of it. I think it, I'm sort of conflicted by what's going on. What but are you I, worried about? Well, I'm worried that it might turn into quite a sort of uh, an early 80s tribute act, you know, Trotsky's tribute act, which has the culture around it, which is very hostile to anyone who disagrees. And it could just collapse in front of the electorate. It could do. But I don't think there's any safe ground for Labour anyway. You know, so this is one strategy. It might not work. We'll see. But, I mean, it's incumbent on all of us to try and uh, make the best of what we have over the next few months and years. I mean, it's an obligation as members of the party. John Cruddis, thank you very much. Well, we're joined on the line now by our political editor, uh, Laura Koonsberg. And, and Laura, he doesn't give interviews uh, very often, so very interesting to hear him talking about what could be possible ahead. 
Indeed, Sarah. And isn't it extraordinary to hear that John Curtis seen as one of the really serious thinkers in the Labour movement, saying just as the ballot is almost closing, he still has not mm. made his mind up who to back after months of campaigning. And, you know, that's not unusual. At one of the rallies that I was at this week, an Andy Burnham event, lots of voters were undecided, even after this extraordinary summer. And that's one of the things that makes it very hard to predict the results. Although... Corbyn is widely seen as the front runner. One member of the Shadow Cabinet said to me they'd be flabbergasted if he doesn't win, at least in the first round. The sort of playoff system of the voting, the way it's set up, makes it hard to predict. And this sort of last minute sense where some of the ballots still haven't turned up and lots of people still haven't decided. But what's also so interesting from John Crudis, which will be echoed by Liz Kendall later today and a lot of people believe behind the scenes, what has happened this summer has its roots long ago. The sort of realignment, the good hard think after Tony Blair that the party needed to do just didn't come. And what's happened this summer is Jeremy Corbyn sort of occupied that vacuum, if you like. And, but also that suggestion that he raised there at the end that uh, if Jeremy Corbyn does win going forward, and he's clearly very welcoming of the, the sort of the turbulence, the debate, mm. the discussion, but the suggestion that mm. the party could collapse in front of the electorate. Well, yeah, somebody was talking to you about this yesterday said to me, you can have good chaos and bad chaos. I think there is a sense that there would be, at, at the minimum, a lot of turbulence um, in terms of a Jeremy Corbyn victory. People just do not know exactly what would happen. How would he run the show? I mean, there are his ideas, which are simply, you know, not accepted by the majority of the Parliamentary Labour Party. So there are all sorts of issues, not just about how he runs things at Westminster, but whether or not the Labour Party would find themselves rapidly plunged into the kind of civil war that they had in the 1980s. One senior figure said to me this week, I've seen this movie before and it does not end well. Now the hope of course of Jeremy Corbyn's supporters is they've managed to do quite something extraordinary this summer. They have energised tens of thousands of people in an age when you normally hear politicians bemoaning the fact that people aren't that interested, people don't want to turn up, people don't want to join the memberships. And here we have Labour with half a million people, more than half a million people taking part in their own party election. Corbyn's campaigners hope whether or not they turn out to be correct mm. is, would be quite something else but they hope he might be able to find that kind of resonance with a new coalition of voters in the country but well, it's just an underlying something quite extraordinary they believe that quite fervently but nearly indeed. everybody in senior positions in the party think they're wrong right, interesting weekend ahead laura koonsberg thank you very much touch me baby,